These are the sea otters. Because of their classic whiskers, they're called the old men of the sea. They're the smallest of all marine mammals and quite possibly the most adorable animal on the planet. Our connection to the sea otter is very complex. Throughout the world, there's probably no human-animal relationship quite as complicated. We've been drawn to the sea otter from the very beginning. The way they eat, the way they play, the way they raise their young completely on the water. And of course, that thick otter coat, the densest fur in the animal kingdom. A million hairs per square inch, more than humans have on their entire body. But sadly, it's because of their fur that our love for the otter turned into something completely different. It's like we wanted to reach out and embrace their beauty, but instead, we reached out and took their beauty and wrapped ourselves in it. By the mid-1700s, sea otters all along the Pacific Rim began to be hunted en masse for their fur. For over a century and a half, fur traders conducted a brutal harvest. Sea otters were hunted to extinction here in the Pacific Northwest and to near extinction in California and Alaska. A global population of about 300,000 plummeted to about 2,000 animals. By 1911, there were so few otters left that the hunts really weren't profitable anymore. So the traders moved on. A treaty was then signed by the United States, Great Britain, Russia, and Japan, giving sea otters full protection. But it would take generations for these remarkable creatures to recover, and they've still got a long way to go. Today we're going to visit biologists and researchers who brought the sea otters back to these waters in the 1970s, and others working to protect them from a fate worse than the fur trade, the oil spill. It's the fascinating world of the North Pacific sea otter, nature's comeback kid, the old man of the sea. Our understanding of nature is in its infancy. For generations, we've gone into the wild and conquered it. But then we discovered that we didn't need to conquer to understand. We found that in the wild, whole new worlds are revealed. Only out here do we see animals as they truly are. Come with us as we journey into some of nature's most awesome wildlife habitats. Explore. Encounter, experience, baby wild. People want to know the difference between sea otters and river otters. Well, they are in the same family. Basically the weasel family, which includes skunks, badgers, and minks. But there are some differences. The river otter is only half the size of the sea otter, but its tail is much longer. The main difference is in their lifestyles. The river otter lives on land and only hunts in the water, but sea otters live their entire lives in the ocean. But there's an important thing that river and sea otters have in common. They're valuable pelts, and both have paid the price. River otters used to be plentiful along the Mississippi watershed until trappers got to them. By the 1930s, they were pretty much wiped out. And here, along the Pacific coast, the fur trade absolutely devastated the sea otter population. In the mid-1960s, the Alaska Department of Fish and Game began translocating sea otters into sites in British Columbia, Washington, and Oregon, where the otters used to be before the fur trade period. From 1969 to 1972, 241 sea otters were reintroduced into the Northwest. In Washington state, the translocation took hold. A total of 59 sea otters were brought down from Alaska and reintroduced to these waters. 30 years later, the population has expanded to about 500 animals. As a matter of fact, there's about 30 or 40 behind me right now. The sea otter has returned to the Pacific Northwest.
Well, I think when they got up here towards this rock, they may have actually gone underneath us and went out to deeper water. This is a, a male group that forms up uh, every winter. Those that are adult breeding males will form territories and then the other animals will just uh, hang in offshore groups away from where the females are. So in another couple of weeks, the male groups will start to break up and they will start moving back into the central portion of the range with the females. The translocation of the sea otter back to the Washington coast here was an incredible success story. And here's one of the researchers that made it all happen. This is Ron Jameson, a research biologist from the USGS. Ron, um, what was so important about bringing the sea otter back to these waters? Well, the uh, sea, otter, sea otter as a species occurred up the entire eastern Pacific Ocean. And uh, once the fur trade started, uh, it only took about 100 years or so, and the populations had been extirpated from Oregon, Washington, British Columbia, most of the historic range. Uh, so it was an opportunity for uh, human beings to bring back a population of animals that had been uh, driven to extinction and reestablish them in their historic uh, habitat. Now, they did really well when you relocated them here in this area. I know that earlier, though, in Oregon and other areas, it wasn't that easy. What happened? Um, in Oregon, the, the population was released down on the uh, southern Oregon coast, and they did okay there for several years. Uh, in Washington, and then eventually went extinct for a second time. Here in Washington, the first year that it was done was 1969, and half of those animals that were released were eventually found uh, dead on the beach because they had been just taken down to the Point Grenville area and just released directly to the open ocean after being held in captivity for quite a while. So they had no tools with which to reacclimate. Yes, those animals, uh, they had no time to clean their fur. They'd been soiled in transit and they went back into the ocean soiled. They hadn't eaten for several hours and otters need to eat frequently. Once they hit the cold waters, uh, they just succumbed to exposure. So they were immediately out of business. 16 of them, half, half of, the, of the release in 1969. So the key to reacclimating them is to give them a little time before they're released into the wild. Exactly, and then in 1970, that's what was done. Uh -huh. And uh, as far as we know, the mortality was very, very low. We, in fact, really? virtually zero. So it, that, was, that was a very successful that's release. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that was great. That's a way to do it. Yeah, for sure. All right, the observer shift on position in the open sea. Four, three, two, one. And one of the more uh, kind of interesting things about this whole translocation program, mm -hmm. it started because of, uh, of some atomic bomb testing really? up in the Aleutian Islands, yes, in the mid and late 60s. Uh -huh. At Amchitka Island, the Atomic Energy Commission had proposed to do two tests of uh, atomic bombs. And they were asked if they would fund a mitigation program to uh, translocate and reestablish sea otters in their historic range. And they did, and uh, sea otters were translocated back to uh, uh, much of southeastern Alaska and oh. uh, Washington and to Oregon, oh. also British Columbia, but that was not part of that particular program. Uh -huh. So it's ironic that it took the atomic bomb to get sea otters back to the Washington coast. Where exactly did these otters come from? Um, these sea otters are rehab animals. They were picked up for one reason or another, and they needed a home. For example, three of them were their moms were killed in the Valdez oil spill, so the babies needed to be hand-raised, and they came here. And the other one, Lutas, the, the dark one, her mom was killed in a boating accident in Alaska, and so the Fish and Wildlife Department asked us to take care of her. Is it an adventure working with them? It's a constant puzzle. You never know what an otter's gonna do. You come in every day to a new surprise. They've actually broken into the back room, stolen our boots, they've taken rain gear from us, they've actually grabbed television cameras before, pulled them into the water. So you never can trust them. They're always into trouble. <laughs> so when the Valdez oil spill happened, nobody knew how to take care of these animals, so they came to aquariums. And if we should lose a lot of otters, say an oil spill off the Washington coast, we need to know how to successfully reproduce them, how they reproduce, what their seasonal cycles are. And the Seattle Aquarium is the first aquarium in the world to successfully breed sea otters in captivity. So we compiled about 500,000 data points in, and we threw it in the computer and we worked up kind of normal patterns for sea otters and pups. So other aquariums can use that as well to see if their animals are doing okay. Well, way to go aquarium. Yeah, way to go aquarium, thank you.
Baby Wild will be right back. 